So we have nothing to talk about today. No, not nothing, but nothing. The hype machine driven tech company that's heavy on promises, slick viral marketing, edgy claims of shaking up the market with layers of style, but is there any substance or are they just a whole load of nothing? Yeah, sorry, these jokes are getting tired already, but don't worry, in terms of jokes, there's nothing more in my script, apart from that one. I've had these in my possession for months at this point, but I had nothing else to add to what DMS had already said about them. Sound quality was just middle of the road, and they also had a lot of issues with connectivity and noise cancellation that needed to be resolved. But it's been a while since they launched, and there have been some firmware updates. Nothing are also marketing hard with their new phone and teasing a new version of their earphones. So we should probably talk about whether Nothing have actually fixed the issues with the Ear One, or you know, whether they've just sat back and done nothing. Hey guys, this is Noel and this is Wheezy Tech and these are the Nothing Ear One True Wireless Earphones. For disclosure, this video is not sponsored and I'm not being paid for this video. However, the Nothing Ear One were sent to me by Nothing for the purposes of this review. I didn't have to hand over any money for these, so you might say that I paid nothing for them. Look, I have to get these jokes out of my system so that we can get on with the rest of the video, but I can't promise I won't try and stick any more of these jokes in there. Anyway, Nothing have no creative control over this video and they will be seeing this for the first time, the same as you. So with all that said, let's just get on with it. Battery life is up to 34 hours on a full charge with ANC off and 24 hours with ANC on and you're gonna get four to six hours from a single charge before you have to pop the earphones back in the case. The case itself charges via USB-C and it also has a Qi wireless charging option. In terms of Bluetooth codecs, they support both SBC and AAC codecs. So I'm sorry to all of you on Android, you're not gonna get any Aptex or LDAC support here. The Ear One have 11.6 millimeter dynamic drivers and three high def mics for calls and for the hybrid active noise cancellation. And finally, the Ear One also have gesture controls for volume up and down and skip tracks and all of that stuff. This is all pretty standard stuff for a true wireless earphone coming in at around about £100 in the UK. Honestly, there is nothing that stands out in these specs as being new and different, despite the marketing. We should probably talk about the price and value before I get further into this, as it frames a lot of this discussion. Prior to launch, there was so much hype, we had people putting expectations on them that were frankly unrealistic. That's not entirely the fault of the consumer, with nothing truly overhyping their product long before it came to launch, and before anyone had any chance to try them out. Since launch, others in the audio enthusiast space have been highly critical of them and not without reason. However, expecting Apple AirPods Pro level of performance from a £100 earphone is a bit of a pipe dream. I remember commenting at the time that it's a £100 earphone. If you went into this expecting more than that, you were more than likely gonna be disappointed. The real question is how well they stack up against other sub 150 pound earphones, which is a space dominated by the likes of One More and Soundcore and Soundpeats and so on. Actually, it is an incredibly competitive space and even in the time since the Ear One launched, it's only gotten even more competitive. There are some truly great products available for around 100 pounds and it is incredibly difficult to stand out. Having said that, I have seen the Ear One selling for well south of 100 pounds, so if you wanna check out the current pricing, I'll leave some affiliate links down below. But it's fair to say that whilst there are some real diamonds in the budget end of the true wireless earphones category, there are also a lot of rough. You're usually getting middle of the road sound quality or middle of the road features or features missing entirely. But I think it's important that we set our expectations correctly before judging an earphone like this. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that during my conclusion. I'm gonna talk about the design and the comfort next because I think this is the one area where the Nothing Ear One do stand out. And I still think that they do look pretty cool even now I've had the time to get used to the look. They feel bold and fresh, and I've really got to give it to nothing for the design. This semi-transparent casing looks clean rather than a clutter of components and glue. They've clearly put a lot of time and effort into the design of the Ear One. In terms of comfort, I find them really comfortable. The stem isn't too long and doesn't rub on my face like with some other stem style earphones. They are quite light and they just disappear once they're in the ear. Now, as someone that does struggle with earphone fit, these are up there as one of the more comfortable that I've personally used. 
The Ear One has a companion app appropriately named Ear One, which is available on the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. When we open the app and pair the earphones, we're presented with a screen which gives us the battery percentage of each earphone left and right, as well as the remaining battery in the case. There are two menu options, Hear and Touch, and we'll first take a look at the Hear option. This menu allows you to personalize the sound of the Ear One. At the top, you have the option to configure the strength of the noise cancelling mode with two available settings, low and maximum. You're also able to switch the earphones to transparency mode, which uses the external microphones to pass the audio through from the outside into your head via the earphones. Lastly, you're able to turn both of these features off so that they behave like any other earphone. Underneath this, there is an EQ feature, which has four different preset modes, balanced, more treble, more bass, and voice. I think for most people, they'll want to keep this on balanced. I tend to use voice for podcasts and YouTube videos for that extra clarity. The more bass setting does exactly what it says on the tin, and they are already a little bit muddy sounding without adding any more bass. The more treble option seems to add some upper treble and air, and whilst this does make them a little bit less dark, this doesn't go far enough to really add any clarity to the balance profile. What is missing is a graphical or parametric EQ, which I think could really add some value to the Ear One and make it stand out more from the competition. This is an area where Soundcore really shine with their earphones. The Soundcore app is a really killer feature that allows you so much customization, and this is all seriously lacking here with the Ear One. Back on the home screen of the app, and we can go through to the touch menu, and this allows us to view and configure the gesture controls. The only controls they allow you to change are the triple tap and the tap and hold gestures, but you do have volume controls, play, pause, noise cancelling, and ambient mode controls, as well as your standard song skip options. So it's all the controls you would need. They're all available with the Air One. There are further options available in the app. There's the option to enable or disable the in-ear detection in case you don't like the Ear One automatically responding to you, taking them out of the ears. There is also a low latency mode for those who like to game, but be aware that this can make the Bluetooth connection less stable. There's also a Find My Earbud feature, which works when the earbuds have been removed from the case. Turning this mode on causes the earbuds to play a high-pitched squeal so that you can listen out for them. That's probably useful for when you drop them down the back of the couch, I suppose. And lastly, you also have the ability to update the firmware. Now, I did install the latest firmware on the Nothing Ear One, which is a fairly painless process. Just make sure that you leave the earbuds in the case with the case open and paired to your mobile device. Leaving them both on charge is probably best. The update itself takes just a few minutes. Next up, let's talk about sound and noise cancelling. And in terms of the noise cancelling on the Nothing Ear One, it's not bad in terms of what it's able to actually cancel, but unfortunately plagued with issues, which I will discuss in the next section about the firmware update. So for now, I think we'll just focus on the sound, which seems to have not changed since the update. And in terms of that sound quality, they are nothing special. A basic mainstream tuning, not too bassy, but just enough for a modern audience, but a thicker lower mid-range area, which sort of masks the upper mids, or perhaps the upper mids are kind of recessed. It, basically, it just doesn't sound very detailed, and it also doesn't sound very punchy, and overall, it's kind of just muddy sounding. So nothing to write home about in terms of sound quality. And as previously discussed, you can tweak the sound profile a little bit in the app, but don't go expecting miracles. Bass is stronger with the noise cancelling enabled, and detail is also hurt by having noise cancelling enabled, so you end up with a lack of clarity and a rather thick sound signature. Enabling the treble boost alongside the noise cancelling does go some way to clearing things up, but as the Ear One seems to have a masked upper mids, clarity is always going to suffer, and there's no way in the app to tweak this. The inclusion of a graphic or parametric equaliser would go a long way to helping the Ear One, but sadly this is not a feature that is included. The best sound profile for the Ear One can be found by using the balance preset and disabling the noise cancellation. And this does leave you with a somewhat mainstream, affordable headphone type of sound. So basically it sounds like what you might expect for a £100 true wireless earphone. The only preset that isn't muddy is the voice preset, which seems to focus more on the mid-range, cutting out the low end. It does do a good job of adding clarity for spoken words, such as for podcasts and watching YouTube videos, but it's not a good fit for anything else. Look, it's hard to really go into a full-on deep dive of the sound of such a middle-of-the-road sounding earphone. They make sound, it doesn't sound bad per se, you know, for a hundred pounds, it just doesn't sound especially good either. But you have to ask yourself, does it actually matter? What are you doing with your earphones? For those who want the ultimate in audio fidelity to listen to and get lost in their music, these probably aren't going to cut it. But for most people, getting a pair of earphones to use on public transport and walking around listening to background music, 
making and receiving phone calls, listening to podcasts and watching videos on YouTube. To be honest, this is actually okay and a fair price to pay for wireless convenience, assuming that the feature set works as intended, of course, which leads me right onto the next section. So as I mentioned earlier, there are firmware updates available for the Nothing Air 1, so I made sure to get them updated and test to see if there have been any improvements to the device since launch. Before the update, I was having issues with the noise cancellation being inconsistent and not working on one side or the other. The Air 1 uses a hybrid active noise cancelling system which has microphones externally and internally and is constantly adjusting to the ambient noise around you, which is quite processor intensive. This is great for listening in a static environment with lots of continuous background noise such as on an aircraft. However, if you're moving around and making lots of different noises, the earphones are working extra hard, adjusting the noise cancelling to target the noise around you. Prior to the firmware update, it felt as though the Ear One was struggling to keep up with the noise. There would be sudden large changes in the strength of the noise cancelling in one ear at a time. And it's a very strange effect because it feels like a sudden pressure change in one of the ears, similar to if you were losing seal like they were about to fall out. You could then hear the noise cancelling slowly return to normal, but if you made another loud noise, you could immediately hear the noise cancelling almost completely stop working, and often the change in each ear would be completely different. I have heard other earphones and headphones struggle with sudden louder noises, but they've always recovered instantly. The Ear One, however, was really slow to adjust. The result being that the noise cancelling was all over the place and basically unusable. So after the firmware update, have things been fixed? Well, sort of, but also no. It is much better than it was before, for sure. In fact, I would say that the noise cancelling on the Ear One is now actually quite usable. However, it still glitches out more frequently than on any other device that I've heard before. With that said, for the price tag of the Ear One, with this firmware update, I am definitely a bit happier than I was before. To conclude then, portable audio devices such as these are multi-function devices, often the ability to make calls, the noise cancellation, the ambient modes, the smart assistants are all big selling points for this kind of device and sometimes the main selling point. For my expectations, the sound of a device like this doesn't have to be the best there is. It just needs to be good enough for me to enjoy listening to music and podcasts when I'm walking around outside and where I'm not paying full attention to the micro details of the sound quality. But if the tech features in a device like this are not up to scratch, well then they at least need to bring the sound quality along with that wireless convenience or what else is there left in terms of value. What are you getting for your money that you couldn't spend less and get the same or spend just a little bit more and get better elsewhere. The sub £150 true wireless earphone category is incredibly competitive these days, and £100 can get you a lot of really decent wired earphones. Often, even £30 can get you a better sounding wired earphone, and the venerable Blonde BL3 is one that comes to mind. But of course, what you're paying for with the Nothing Ear One is wireless convenience, and I feel as though the Nothing Ear One are not really in a competitive place. Sure, they are small, light and comfortable, and they're also pretty stylish, but they are let down by glitchy noise cancellation and a rather mediocre and muddy sound profile. Things they could do to improve would be to add better EQ features in the app, and this would allow people to tweak the sound profile to their own taste. This is one area where the competition really shine. And of course, they also need to fix those glitches with the noise cancellation. When you have other brands like Soundcore and One More and others putting out really solid products for a very similar price point, the Nothing Ear One are looking like nothing special, but still, they've got that wireless convenience, they make sounds, they look good, they're fairly affordable, and actually, I have seen them selling well below their normal retail price. And if you see them selling for a good 25% discount, that could very well tip the scales for you. Whether that's enough for you, well, that's really up to you to decide. Okay, before I wrap up, then let's do a quick test of the microphone of the Nothing Ear One. I've got this paired to an iPhone and recording this in the uh, Voice Memos app. And uh, this is how it sounds. Okay, that's it from me for this video then. If you like this video, then you know what to do. Hit like, get subscribed, and I'll see you again in my next video. Right, that's it. I'm done here. I've got nothing else to say. <laughs>